in a beverage category controlled firmly by Gatorade for decades, will the massive marketing push of BioSteel be enough to make a material impact? You might remember in early October of 2019, I explained about a mergers and acquisitions event between a leading marijuana company and a Canadian-based sports nutrition brand. For those that haven't consumed that content, I'm going to pop up the video for you guys right here and I will also include a link in the content description. The theory of that piece of content surrounded the commercialization of CBD-focused sports nutrition products. Canopy Growth acquired BioSteel for its expertise in the dietary supplements market because it believed that CBD-focused supplements, especially within the U.S. market, would become a huge opportunity in the near future. And while BioSteel did commercialize CBD sports nutrition products that you could buy through the vitamin shop, the COVID-19 effect created a resource constraint with the regulatory bodies like the FDA and put the CBD category inside of some regulatory type purgatory stage. With CBD regulation being stalled for the last few years, Canopy Growth and BioSteel decided to focus on bringing the best kept secret in professional sports, the hydration product that BioSteel has, to the mainstream market by offering it in a packaged beverage format. I'll explain later in the content why Canopy Growth and BioSteel haven't completely pivoted from a cannabis-focused strategy long-term, but I think explaining Canopy Growth's ownership structure a bit will provide you at least a glimpse at how they're even able to make a decision like this, have a cost-benefit analysis that makes any sense. Canopy Growth just happens to be minority owned at 38.6% by the $9 billion plus alcoholic beverage CPG portfolio Constellation brands. BioSteel has been leveraging Constellation brands beer distribution network throughout the last few months to launch its hydration beverage in the U.S. market. This has helped them quickly capture market share by landing large retail accounts like CVS, Walmart, and Quick Trip. While it's still in the very early days, BioSteel is already the seventh biggest sports drink brand according to IRI with only a 3.6% ACV for the 13 weeks that ended May 16th of 2021. Though this is hardly clean sales data, Canopy Growth does break out the other CPG revenue on its earnings report and within their most recent earnings report, which was fiscal 2021 in quarter four, so you also were able to see the full fiscal year, that other CPG segment, which I'm assuming is mostly BioSteel, had $54 million, and this is Canadian dollars because it's a Canadian-based corporation, over the last 12 months, and it did grow 74% year over year. It's also important to note that the last quarter, that quarter four of fiscal 2021, they actually had a much stronger growth of revenue and it now has an annualized run rate of around 82 million Canadian dollars. So what's driving this recent growth? The sports drinks category is all about building awareness through marketing partnerships. So I just wanna give you guys a little bit of the marketing efforts overview of BioSteel with an X NHL player as one of its co-founders, BioSteel has really been ingrained in, in, within the culture of professional sports since its founding. In fact, BioSteel has been purchased by 70% of the teams within the four largest sports leagues in North America. And that level of authenticity is extremely important when you're competing for attention assets within the professional sports teams, leagues, persons, and you're going up against mega beverage portfolios like PepsiCo and the Coca-Cola company that honestly have 
limitless marketing budgets. And even before the acquisition, BioSteel had major ambassadors like NFL star players Ezekiel Elliott and Jalen Ramsey, NBA player Andrew Wiggins, and reigning NHL MVP Connor McDavid. Now with the backing of a 550 million Canadian dollar publicly traded company that has the backing of a $9 billion alcoholic beverage portfolio in Constellation Brands, BioSteel has been able to massively increase its marketing partnerships with high profile sports teams, players, and leagues. The most notable marketing partnerships include, in August 2020, they announced a momentous partnership with Kansas City Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes, who many believe is considered to be the new face of the NFL. It was also disclosed that Patrick Mahomes would have an equity position in the company. A month later, BioSteel signed leading NFL wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins to a multi-year endorsement deal that also disclosed he would be an investor in the company. In October of 2020, BioSteel doubled down on athlete and sports influencer partnerships by signing top sportscasters and TV personalities like Aaron Andrews. In November of 2020, BioSteel became the official sponsor of the preeminent college basketball tournaments deemed Bubbleville and the NABC's Hall of Fame Classic. That's along with being the official sports drink of the Atlantic 10 Conference. In December of 2020, BioSteel became the official sports drink of the Toronto Raptors and the Philadelphia 76ers. In February of 2021, the U.S. Soccer Federation and BioSteel announced a multi-year partnership designating the sports drink as a sponsor of U.S. Soccer. In March of 2021, BioSteel announced a historic long-term global partnership between the sports hydration company and all-star Luka Doncic. Doncic has been appointed the title of Global Chief Hydration Officer, and it was disclosed that he would have equity in the company. This also included the Dallas Mavericks to its growing list of official sports drink partnerships from NBA teams. And then in April 2021, BioSteel announced a multi-year deal with Brooklyn Nets head coach and two-time NBA MVP Steve Nash. It also includes BioSteel as the official sports drink of the Brooklyn Nets. Now you have to be asking yourself, is this too much? or maybe it's actually not enough. While we don't have any exact knowledge of the marketing budget that has been spent by BioSteel, if we compare their marketing spend to the likes of the market leader Gatorade, the comparison would be laughable. What Gatorade spends annually or what the now Coca-Cola owned body armor has spent through its existence to be able to grab even 10% of the market share. Gatorade commands around 72% of the US sports drinks industry that has retail sales of more than $8.3 billion and is growing at around 15% year over year. Fact is consumer interest towards functional beverages is on the rise. That being said, today's consumers don't just want a great tasting beverage that helps them keep hydrated. They also want added health benefits. So let's bring this back to the original thesis around why Canopy Growth acquired BioSteel and this surrounds the cannabis market. Now BioSteel cannot compete against PepsiCo and the Coca-Cola company at their game of just basic product iterations of the non-aseptic sports drinks market. But what they can do is actually play a different long game. If you noticed, BioSteel's marketing efforts are really kind of collected towards two main areas, NFL and NBA assets. So you have to ask yourself, why is this? Well, the NBA announced that during the 2020-2021 year, they were no longer going to be testing for cannabis. And going forward, they would have much less stringent testing protocols around the use of cannabis. Now, the NFL has created a kind of an off season that they would not be testing for cannabis. And that's between mid April and early August. And then throughout the season, they actually increased the level that would show up in a drug test and they eliminated the suspension element 
when a player does fail a drug test for marijuana. So this huge softening between two of the world's biggest professional sports leagues is seen as a huge win for destigmatizing cannabis. Many, including myself, believe cannabis federal legalization within the United States will happen sometime before the Biden administration ends. So who will be in one of the best positions to capitalize on this shift? Constellation Brands, because of its ownership in Canopy Growth, and Canopy Growth because of its ownership in Biosteel. Canopy Growth has already created distribution and retail partnerships for their CBD and CPG brands, which positions them strongly in building out route-to-market infrastructure for the expected significant cannabis reform. The work that BioSteel is already doing today with its marketing investments will help increase brand exposure and will pay dividends long-term for the brand. So I hope you guys enjoyed this piece of content. If you guys have any questions around the sports drinks market overall or BioSteel specifically, don't hesitate to leave a comment on this content or reach out to me on any of my social media networks.